since this is a pitch contest, I figured I'd start by giving um, the best piece of advice I ever got on presentations from my old boss, Jim Barksdale. And I'm going to take that advice in this presentation, and that is there are three keys to a good presentation. Number one, you need to have a big opening. And number two, you have to have a strong close. And number three, and most importantly, you have to keep number one and number two as close together as possible. <laughs> so the title of today's talk is The Future of Humankind is Entirely Dependent Upon the Contestants in Technovation Challenge. <laughs> but no pressure. <laughs> and to understand why the future of humankind is entirely dependent on all of you, we have to start with the root cause of everything that's wrong in the world, which is, of course, as most of you know, teenage boys. <laughs> now, it's not their fault. In fact, you may be surprised to know that I used to be a teenage boy myself. Um, but I am better now, so don't worry. Uh, but the thing about teenage boys is um, they're a little bit weird. Like, for one thing, they're always hungry. Have you noticed anybody have a brother? Always hungry, isn't he? You take him out to breakfast. By the time you get to the car, he's like, I'm hungry. It's like, well, why did we feed you breakfast? You could have been hungry without us taking you to breakfast. It would have been fine. And then the other thing that's a little weird about them, which, and follow me, stay with me, because I'm going to get to the point. But the other thing that's a little weird about them is they have a hard time deciding things. Like if you say to a teenage boy, what do you want to do? What's the answer? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's like it's an instant Scooby-Doo, right or wrong. <laughs> and so if you put these together, and you, you guys have been programming, so you know this, if you put these together, like, I'm hungry, you know, don't know what to do. I'm really hungry. Where do you want to eat? I don't know. Well, you could put them in an infinite loop, so <laughs> you have to be careful. But he, here's, here's why it's important. Um, and to understand why it's important, we kind of have to go back to 2001. And in 2001, and we're going to have to talk a little bit about Iraq here. I know you guys are wondering where, where I'm going with this. Um, so back in 2001, we had this problem uh, that uh, most of you were alive for but may not remember that well, which was 9-11, where 3,000 people were, were killed in the World Trade Center. And the thing that happened after 9-11 was very, very, very interesting because at any other point in the history of the United States, if that kind of thing had happened, the answer would have been easy. It would have been, we go to war with the people who attacked us. Um, but on 9-11, it was a little different because there was no like country that attacked us. It was a terrorist organization called Al-Qaeda started uh, by a guy named Osama bin Laden in 1979 when he was 22, done being a teenager, first big idea, start Al-Qaeda, but uh, <laughs> I won't go there just yet. Um, and so the question was like, okay, who do we go fight? And it was a hard question to answer, so the, the best thinkers, you know, of our, of our time were going, okay, well, we've got to get to the root cause of terrorism. What's the root cause of terrorism? And people said, well, the root cause of terrorism you know, is, is got to be like, these guys don't live in democratic societies. And so if we just get democracy out there, um, then like that'll solve terrorism. And there was a book, uh, the very influential book written by Natan Sharansky, very smart guy, called The Case for Democracy. And everybody said, we, we need democracy, and that'll solve the terrorism problem. And then you kind of fast forward, and what happened is, you know, we, we thought, or maybe didn't think, or or mostly thought that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, and we were like, okay, um, and I'll get back to the teenage boys, don't worry. And, and, and we were like, okay, uh, you know, here's our chance to create democracy in the middle of the Middle East, and that'll stop terrorism. And here we are 10 years later, and it kind of hasn't worked. Not, like, not really. In fact, we just had democracy in Egypt, and they elected, as soon as they elected, uh, had their elections, we were like, uh-oh, <laughs> we, the dictator was probably kept us more safe than the new guys. And so what's going on? Why isn't democracy working? Um, what does this have to do with teenage boys? And how are the contestants in Technovation Challenge going to save the world? Uh, 
And it really comes down to kind of the most important. So, so then, like now that there's no democracy, uh, people are going, well, well, or there is democracy, but it's not working. People are going, well, why not? And it's like, well, the, the foundation for democracy wasn't set. There was no free press. There wasn't enough security. Um, and that's kind of right, but if you look further into it, what you find is even if there was a free press, there's not like a lot of literacy. So press is good, but not if you can't read, because uh, then you don't know how to vote for. And then when you don't know who to vote for and you can't read, generally the best campaign slogan is vote for me or go to hell. <laughs> so so what, what, is the, what is the root cause and what's the most important statistic? And the most important statistic about terrorism is one that never gets told, which is if you educate a girl in the developing world, you educate five people on average. On average, five people get educated because if you educate one girl, then she will educate at least four other people through the course of her life. That's just statistics. If you educate a boy, you are lucky if you educate one person. <laughs> And that's because they're hungry and they don't know what to do. <laughs> and this shouldn't be that surprising to us. So, so basically, without women's rights, without girls going to school, without girls learning things, without girls becoming part of it, then you get a lot of illiteracy. And you get a lot of hungry people who don't know what to do. And that's a good recipe for violence. And so probably, if we were to go back in time, maybe what we shouldn't have been trying to push on the world was democracy, but maybe we should have pushed women's rights. Maybe that was the first thing to push. And then once we have women's rights, we can talk about free press and democracy once people know how to read. And it's, it shouldn't be that surprising to us that this is the way the world has gone. Because if you go back and look at the societies that we all came from, be in Europe or Asia or Africa or anywhere, if you look at those societies before women's rights and before literacy, they look a lot like the terrorist societies. They're very violent. It's rough. In fact, Thomas Hobbes, the great philosopher, wrote you know, the, the, the state of nature, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. I love the short part. It's like solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and not enough of it. <laughs> if only we could have more. Um, so that's, that's a state of, that's kind of the state of the world if you don't have educated girls. Now, what does that have to do with Technovation Challenge? Well, we have to move over to technology to understand that. So what's going on in the world of technology today? There are some very important things. The rise of mobile platforms, the rise of social, the rise of cloud. But at the firm, the thing that we think is most important that's going on is something that we like to call Software eats the world. So what does that mean? Well, it turns out that we've just gotten to the point where computers are fast enough, networks are fast enough, there's enough people on the network that software can replace entire industries very quickly. So the first one was an industry called book selling. There used to be this great thing called borders until a software company named Amazon ate it. And then, um, if you go a little further, there used to be this thing called direct marketing, um, which wasn't that great. And then a software company called Google ate that, and it's gone. And then there used to be, uh, when you used to make animated films, they used to be kind of like hand-drawn and laid out together. And then a software company called Pixar ate that. And then Disney had to buy Pixar to stay relevant in animated film. Recently, a company, a software company called Netflix passed Comcast in the number of subscribers for digital contracts, so, co content. So software is starting to eat the cable industry. Um, <clears throat> some of you may have remembered a company called Kodak. This would be a company called Kodak, another company called Photomat. Um, and kind of digital photography plus like Facebook has eaten, like it just completely ate Photomat and it's just like ate it for lunch, nobody even noticed. Uh, payments and cash are starting to get eaten um, by companies like Square and PayPal. And slowly but surely, 
software is eating various industries. To make it really concrete, a lot of you have you've been developing software for mobile phones. Well, my mobile phone, do you know, want to know what it ate? It ate my calculator. The software on my phone ate my calculator. It ate my watch. It ate my camera. It ate my Thomas Guide. It ate my day runner. And like a teenage boy, it's still hungry. <laughs> so software is eating the world. And, it, it, and the next thing, software is going to eat education. Software <clears throat> is going to eat financial services. It's continuing. So if software is eating the world, the question, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what kind of world is it going to be? And I think the answer is, the future of humankind is entirely dependent upon the contestants in Technovation Challenge. Because you see, What's going to happen if software eats the world, and all the programmers are boys, we already know what's going to happen. First thing is there's a shortage of programmers, because boys don't educate anybody. And, <laughs> and guess what we have now is we have a shortage of programmers. And so it's so important. The work that you're doing here is so important. It's not just important to you. It's important to all of us, because the world that we live in is going to be Hobbesian, or it's going to be awesome. And it really depends on who's building the software. And so I'd just like to, one, say thank you, and two, to close um, with a quote from the great philosopher slash rapper, Drake. <laughs> and I say, I know things get hard, but girl, you got it. Girl, you got it. There you go. And all I can say is, I'm so proud of you. Thank you.